Good morning, modelers. Welcome to the class. Today we're going to talk a little bit about camouflaging our panther and um, a good place to start is obviously with some some good books. We have to keep in mind that for a World War II panther books are not always um, I mean you can go to the internet go to YouTube but if you study these they're all black and white. Uh, I'm sure there's colored photographs of panthers um, you can also cheat. I mean, I'm sure that the camouflage schemes on panthers were similar to that on pa uh, tigers and uh, all the heavyweights, the king tigers and what have you. So don't don't go just looking for panther camouflage. You just study the larger German vehicles, and um, and you'll probably come up with a with, with an answer as to where you're going to go with the camouflage. Now, as you know, I take it rather loosely as far as um, colors and and camouflage patterns. I know that this is a fantastic book and it zeroes in on particular units, particular uh, tank crews and what have you and this is a fabulous reference. Um, just a terrific book for zeroing in on, on, on certain panthers. Um, one you should all have if you don't have it already. I'm sure most of you do. The other great book is this one here. Dewey Faust. And, and it's been on the market a little while. Might be a little harder to find. But nevertheless, um, if you can, maybe you can buy it on eBay or what have you. Um, but this is also a great reference. And, and what I basically do is select um, a diff, um, maybe a pattern... And then just jiggle it to my own preference. I don't want to do an exact panther, say, 132. Well, I, I have never seen a panther with 132 on it. I, I didn't copy it out of a book. Um, just because it gives me a little more leeway moving forward. In other words, I can have tools missing. I can have the back half knocked off, um, such as this part. I can have certain scratches. I can paint the crew, I can put it in somewhere on, you know, Prussia or the Russian front. Um, but I'm not going to zero in on a date and a time, which this book does fantastic a job of that. Um, and, and the reasons for that is, it, like I say, it just gives me um, a little leeway as color schemes and, and camouflage patterns. So in this book, there's 35th scale drawings of the Panther, and I photocopy them out of the book, and then I, with a pencil crayon, I color in where I'm going to put, for instance, the green paint in this case, for this Panther that we've been working on. And the only reason I do that is because once you fire up your airbrush, you got your paint inside, you can't make up the camouflage as you go. A little bit of guideline, it's only going to take you five minutes to, to put this together. I've tagged them turret. Um, and I just mark on the different pages um, where the camouflage is going to lie. And the beautiful thing is because this is not a particular panther that was in Normandy or, or Russian front. Again, leeway is more for my liking. I just want to build my model, put nice decals on it, paint crew, and then put it in a cabinet at the hobby shop. I, or on, for instance, a lot of people want to just put them up on their shelves. And um, so it's, it's, you know, like I say, leeway is puts me in a better comfort zone. So then I, I can move to the hall and I also have pencil crayon drawings for the hall and the shot from above. And I don't use this uh, guideline um, to the exact. Obviously I'm working here on a three-dimensional form and these are flat drawings. So you're gonna skew it a little bit, but don't panic. But it would be great for you just to sit down five minutes the night before and scribble out a, a pattern that you're going to then transfer onto your 
three-dimensional panther. So, um, time well spent. The other thing I like to do is I'll, I'll take one of the Rinaldi books. He's made, um, I think, five books. Um, at least two on German armor. And um, Mike's always got um, a fantastic reference for putting down camouflage. And um, so it's easily done. And then he proceeds to do from the camouflage on go into the weathering, which is our next class. We'll, we'll do a little bit of wash today, but let's get the camouflage on first. Okay, so we're gonna apply the camouflage. And there's a couple ways of doing it. You can do it freehand, following the direction of the map that we've produced here. You can use a gyro cut. And a gyro cut is a swivel-headed exacto type of blade. It's a fantastic tool to have. The guys who do Luftwaffe and, 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 and some of the RAF, uh, World War II airplanes, definitely have one of these to cut out their patterns. I use it for 35th scale armor as well. And it's just an excellent, excellent tool to have. They're not expensive, um, sharp as sharp can be. So all you do is um, draw out your pattern on a piece of tape and because we have a sheet of glass here, we have a tool that can cut the pla uh, Just lay the tomato tape over top of the mask, line it up with the corners. And the Tamiya paint is very, very thin. Therefore, you can see your, um, use this as a transparency. And you can then you can just cut the, the camouflage patterns out and then apply them to your tank. Now, gyro cut, here it is here. I think they're um, designed in the United Kingdom, um, but commonly found here at the hobby shop or uh, your local hobby shop in North America. And um, it's just a beautiful, and you can cut any pattern just by letting the swivel, a little bit of pressure here and there. You can cut any patterns you want. You want to do a psychedelic Volkswagen from the 1960s? Here you are. You can cut out a stencil in seconds. So we can just follow along, and as you can see, it is just a fantastic tool to have in your toolbox. Fantastic shapes. Obviously, this is similar to some of the tanks that you see more or less in a contemporary basis. In other words, uh, tanks that are about today. Um, so all you do is lay down your tape, your Tamiya tape, Follow that line that you can see right through the glass. And there's your masks. There's your edge of your Camouflage patterns. There's our beautiful stencil. Line this back up again. So it's an excellent little tool. And it's called a gyro cut.
And there you are. And you just keep cutting around. Now in our case, I'm going to do mine slightly different. But that is one heck of a great tool. Another way of doing it, a hard edge camouflage, is to mix your colors that you're going to use. In my case, I'm going to use Tamiya XF71 mixed with a little dab of X2, gloss white. And I take a quite a uh, fine paintbrush and I mix the um, paint with the thinner and mix it up in my airbrush and then take the brush in the mixed um, formula or recipe that we have and then we'll draw the lines on. So you'll see and it's very important to mix the paint with the thinner with the uh, uh, gloss white find your um, precise color and then instead of dipping your paintbrush in these and carrying on you must go right to the paint that you're going to airbrush with so i just this is already mixed i'll mix it again And then I just follow my pattern here. And your line has to be wide enough that you can spray. So I'll just make it a little heavier. Because you're going to have to spray right up to the edge of that with no overspray. That's the beauty of hard edge camouflages and using this technique. But you have to make sure that your line is wide enough. And just by following your pattern on your pre-drawn thing, you can, you can, and that, what I'll do is just fire up my airbrush and then fill that in. Okay, so we've drawn the line using the paint from the cup and the airbrush. And you just draw that line on, and sure it's a little um, transparent in around here, but we'll fix that with the airbrush, not to panic. And then you can just carry on throughout the whole model. It's gonna take you a little bit of time, but it's one nice way of getting a hard edge camouflage. So start your airbrush moving, make sure your color and your line is great. And start over here, start moving towards the line. And the mixture in this paint is about 65 to 70% thinner. And the pressure on the airbrush um, compressor is about uh, 17 pounds. And I just never have any air uh, overspray whatsoever. Now with that ratio of 70-30 uh, thinner to paint, it's going to take you just a little bit longer to cover your model, but it's well worth it. There you are, there's a hard edge camouflage pattern. Now, we can move along here to the next 
portion. So what we did was that area right there, and you can see how well it matches up. There's our drawing, there's our camouflage pattern, and we're right on target. Even to the point where we have just caught the lip of the little uh, opening here, and it's the same on here. And then we just carry on with the pattern right through the hull, and it should take you, oh, half an hour or so. And then um, you can't certainly go to the oil washes on the same day. You're going to have to wait the next day. But um, what, what I've done is I've already done the hull. Uh, or, sorry, I've already done the turret as far as the oil washes go. And that's the sort of effect following what we've done from our last class. And you can see the hull and the turret are going to match up. There's a little bit of glitch there, but once again, because the paint is mixed uh, so thinly, I'm just going to draw a little line of uh, German yellow across there, and she'll look fine. So I'm going to do that, put the washes on after airbrushing the hull, and then match it up. So we're going to show how to do that. Actually, I'm going to put a wash just on this little bit of camouflage just to show you guys how I go about that. So I will put a little wash just on that little area. So we're sort of not doing the whole hull following this pattern just for today's purposes. I just want to show you guys a little bit of the wash. Okay, so one of the next steps just before the oil washes will take place is I will add a little bit of white X2 to my color, to my green color. And again, I choose to use cockpit green, but you can use the RAF green, you can use NATO green, you can, there's any variety of greens that you can use. So I've just sort of adapted the color that I've chosen by using this Panther book. And I, and I found that it's a great source for color. So just trying to, uh, um, take the green from this book and apply it to my tank. After the green's applied, then I take, oh, I don't know, about 30% more white and add it on, and then I just modulate the color slightly. So I'll just spray on a little white on the high, um, highlight, highlighted part, not underneath here where there's going to be a shadow where there's no sun. And I just highlight the tank, just spray. And as you can see, because I have such a fine mixture of color, it hasn't hurt the camouflage color bleeding into the yellow. It's still a hard edge camouflage. And then just hit your highlights, tops, what have you. Now, as you can notice, I haven't put the grills on yet. I don't do that till later. And here's the grills ready to go. And I'll explain shortly why they're not on there but they, I, I just find that they fill up with paint there's so many layers to go on here that if you put them on ahead of time sometimes they end up filling in all the little squares on the photo etch so I, I'm just gonna wait until I get my first layer of oil paints on then I'll put the grills on they'll be painted yellow a little bit of green on them and you'll um, you'll notice that they're going to stay very fresh and not full of paint. So now we're going to put some oil paints on. Now before you start, you can't just suddenly put oil paints on your tank and expect that you're going to come up with um, a great finished product. What I recommend once more is taking a book such as this, and there's Adam Wilder's has fantastic books and MIG from MIG Ammo has some fantastic books plus too there's uh, monthly publications all the time on applying the oil washes and I'm sure most of our listeners have those books and magazines so I won't go into too much depth on um, um, the actual mixture or what have you but you can just see it's just endless um, source a book like this 
as far as your oil wash. And if you sit down and read it, it'll come to you very, very quickly. Uh, Mike Rinaldi is a fantastic oil painter, and I would suggest that um, uh, he oil paints have been starting to put on models about 10 years ago, and he, and he himself and, and Adam and Mig, they've just expanded that whole um, type of painting onto our models, and, and the models today are just more colorful and way more depth than ever before so all you have to do is just study it i enjoy reading this i try to read it all the time you know and before i put the oil paints on i you know re be reading this the night before and you can see the 502 paints he's got about 10 colors that he's about to apply to his tank so let's uh let's put our first layer of uh, oil wash on the tank and my favorite color is number 502 industrial earth i think it's number 090 and um i put it on a little piece of cardboard let the linseed oil bleed off a little bit and then i apply very very small amounts this oil paint is a fantastic paint and you can just fill in your recesses all the way along i just go no thinner involved I just put it on fill in the, some of the cracks that are almost invisible by this point from our pre-shading and just bring all those darkened up again then I take a little bit of thinner Just follow the outlines with the thinner. little bit up on the grills and fans and you have to become a 35th scale crewman when you're doing this you have to think about where his hands are going to be and guys working around tanks they have oil on their hands and grease on their hands and then they're going to climb up on the side of the tank and there's going to be a big paw print on the side here and you multiply that by a couple days and a couple months in the field and pretty soon all this area in here is filthy. And all this, what we're doing here, is just creating all those little things that a crew would put on it. Plus, combat. You know, explosions that happen through um, earth and what have you. Explosions that land 10 feet from the tank, throwing the earth up on top of the tank. All these little things or what we're going to try to get to. And you have to have good quality brushes, good quality thinner. And it's one of the best parts of the modeling. It's time consuming. It's going to take up a good part of making the tank. It usually takes me about 25 hours to paint a tank but it's 25 hours spread over a month. And it's gonna take me a whole month to paint our tank. But that's only a couple hours at a time. And we're gonna get into pigments.
Okay, and then what? Give give the uh, green camouflage pattern a little wash down. Now, obviously, there's going to be a track um, hanger on here, but I like to put those on later. They just get in the way of this wash. And as you can see. All you're doing is putting down a nice pattern of battlefield grime. And always uh, go in the direction of rainwater. It's just more pleasing to the eye. If I start going across like this, it just, your eye won't be comfortable picking it up. But this is a very natural direction to travel in. And just go around the whole tank similar to that. And as you can see, we've already done the turret. And the tank's starting to come together. Now, some people have said, well, where's the markings? Where's the German crosses and the uh, 132, which is in this tank here? And the reason I don't put them on yet is because I just find that decals, no matter what, no matter what um, decals you purchase, there is a little bit of a ledge. Okay, so there's no markings on the tank, and I'm gonna explain why. <clears throat> the decals that you put on the tank, let's say this little sketch here is the side of our tank looking at it like this. So here's the side of the tank and the cupola, here's the big barrel. And you're going to put a decal right here, which is equivalent to right here. No matter how thin the decals are, I find there's always an embossed edge to a decal. So there's our decal going on in this direction. Here's our decal going on. So here's our decal lying right here. This little area right here fills with paint due to the fact that I'm going to put 10 coats of different oils on here. This little ledge here, at, which is at the top of the decal, demonstrated here on 131, can sit right up there. And I always have to work it down. Even though this is a fraction of a width, a coat of paint is how thick that decal is. I find that right at the top of the two and the three and the one, there's always a dark ledge forming right here with all my oil paints because I'm going to put probably four or five um, oil paint washes over top of this and I just find it's a lot smoother and a lot easier not to do it it's the same with this little tool rack that belongs here on this panther here described here every panther has it well, those what this part here is one of the last parts I'll put on the tank it's already going to be camouflaged and everything when I go to put it on, but it just gets in the way of my flow. So that's why I don't do it. But it's just an unorthodox way of building it. Certainly if you put it on ahead of time, the, t the track rack, by all means, just carry on oil painting. It's just a preference that I have because I like to brush this down like rainwater and then I'm going to stop glue the piece on and do a little bit more but it's like I say it's an unorthodox way of doing it but you'll find in our next video this tank will have markings on it the tool rack will be on the grill sets will be on and she'll be almost finished all I'm gonna have to do at that point is attach the wheels and the track and use pigments for the uh, weathering and then we're finished. So there you are. It's starting to look like a panther. Okay, so as far as the grills go, and I just use the Tamiya grills. There's different photo etch sets that are excellent. Aber make a beautiful set for the panther. But I just take the Tamiya grills and I always spray with primer through the grills. I never lay the primer or the grill set down like that and then spray it across here. 
I don't want anything to do with these little squares filling up. So always hold the photo etch part like so, spray it, and let the air travel right through all the holes, and you'll never find any paint in the grill. Then I'll spray it then the proper color, such as one of these colors or German yellow. Spray it, sand off the little um, holders on the side of it, and then just simply glue it on and you will find that the grills and, and same these are intake grills they're not um, exhaust grills they're not going to be painted black and heavily weathered because they're intake areas on the tank so you don't have to worry too much about um, going backwards to paint them a, a thin thin layer of uh, oil wash over top of these and they'll be finished plus two when you're gluing them on you're going to use uh, CA glue and um, that's easy to touch up too if there's a little bit of gloss showing through. S simple fix. So there you are, there's a Tamiya Grills all ready to go on the tank. I'm gonna spray them later today.